Hey everybody, this is Brian Mertens from NatureMentor.com and uh, in this video I'm going to be sharing one tip um, for tuning into chickadee vocalizations to make it easier to hear into the sounds that they make and, and detect the alarms. When, when you can learn the language of chickadees they'll, they'll tell you lots of interesting things about hawks and um, cats and owls and things that are hanging around so it's a it's a really helpful bird to learn in bird language and uh, so getting right into it um, one of the things that has really helped me with understanding chickadee vocalizations is just to realize that pretty much all their vocalizations kind of center around their companion call and so if you just tune into the their companion call um, then all the little shifts and things away from that that baseline voice will become a lot more apparent. Um, and so chickadees, th their companion call is kind of this never-ending chatter that they make, and especially if you hear like a flock um, as they're kind of moving around and feeding, they can't really see each other. So they they rely pretty heavily on on talking to each other almost constantly sometimes. Um, and so it's it's quiet, but it's definitely audible. And if you listen for it when there's chickadees around, um, you'll probably hear that back and forth kind of just ongoing chatter. So um, as you tune into that, there's a few other little subtle blips and shifts away that that you might notice that kind of tell you different things. So I'm going to share three of those with you and um, that'll kind of give you a, a jumping off point to, to start out with. So the first thing to listen for is aggression calls. And aggression calls are something that you, you may or may not hear. It's, it's kind of something that you won't necessarily notice unless you know to pay attention for it. But they're kind of these short little garbles of sound. Um, and uh, the 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 main thing to know with these aggression calls is that they they really don't interrupt the flow of the companion calls, and so even though they're pretty common, um, you may or may not notice them, and they're they're really not easily confused with alarm. So if you hear that, um, you probably will just think that it's it's kind of part of the the regular rhythm of their calling. So. I don't place as much emphasis on on the aggression call in chickadees as I do on other birds, like maybe a robin, where the aggression call could easily be um, confused with an alarm. Uh, so the second vocalization I'm going to talk about is the the chickadee call, and this is like the classic call that everyone thinks about when when they hear chickadees, um, and it's kind of that chickadee dee dee, and uh, this this can actually be used, this is probably their most confusing call because it can be used as both a companion call as well as an alarm um, in different contexts. But the general rule to, to listen for with these things is is that the, the more intense it sounds and the greater number of Ds that you hear in the vocalization, the more likely it'll be an alarm. Um, and so... Um, if you're if you're listening and you're hearing these these D's and they're kind of interspersed with the regular feeding rhythm of their kind of soft chipping patterns, um, then it, you're probably just hearing some sort of flock coordination. Um, but then if you if you hear like a, a a few of them over in one spot really going off and and you know d d d d d d d chicka d d d d d d d d d d d it, that can be more likely to be an alarm. Um, so it's a good thing to investigate. And uh, the last vocalization that you might hear interspersed with these uh, rhythmic companion calls um, is the aerial predator alarm. And when you hear this, it, it's just so stark. And for me, it was hard to tune into until I really started listening to the companion call. And I found that when I was actually tracking the, this, this companion call that they were making, the aerial predator alarm just really popped out and it became really apparent. Um, and so basically what you'll hear is they're, they'll be going along, doing their chattering, and then suddenly it'll stop. And uh, you, you might hear some, some sharp, um, high-pitched uh, seat calls, seat, 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 and 
and they'll uh, you might see birds diving into the bushes and um, you know if it just if it's pretty common actually it happens quite regularly but if it's just a, sh a, a short little moment um, where it kind of gets quiet you hear the alarm and then they go back to their feeding you know that could be any number of things it could be something in the distance that just kind of caught their eye and they were aware of it like a like an occipiter a bird eating hawk or um, I've even seen them do that sort of thing when like when they're around a feeder and a blue jay comes in they'll just kind of make that for for just a, a couple seconds and then they'll go right back to their feeding so um, but if you if you hear it and it goes on for a long time or the quiet goes on for a long time then um, you're you're maybe looking at something like a Cooper's Hawk or, or a Sharpshin Hawk pretty close by um, maybe doing some hunting so uh, it's it's really easy to pick up on and the key thing with all these vocalizations there's lots more that you can definitely tune into but if all you do is listen for that 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 baseline chatter that the chickadees do when they're out there all this other stuff will will really pop out a lot more and you'll have something to dig your ears into that'll make chickadee language accessible so thanks for watching this video if you like this video and you're on YouTube um, you can really help me out by clicking the like button and if you want more details on anything I talked about um, there will be a link down in the description to the the web page that goes with this video